Hi, and welcome to The Spiritual Awakener. I'm Susan Kennard, and I'm really pleased that you're here listening to us or watching us on The Spiritual Awakener. This is a podcast where I get to interview really interesting people, people with interesting awakening stories that have led them to help you, the collective. I'm so excited I have met and come across this beautiful lady that I'm going to be interviewing in a moment on my podcast. And it's, I get guided, you know, if I ask someone to come on my podcast, I know it's so it can help you. I know that this person, her name's Rachel, I'm going to introduce her properly in a moment, but she just shines a light with her. And that's why I invited her to come on my podcast, The Spiritual Awakener. So please join me in welcoming Rachel Streeter. Rachel, thank Hello. you so much for agreeing to be here on The Spiritual Awakener. Uh, obviously you know what this is all about you know the spiritual journey uh, this is what you do you know I had a beautiful session with you you gifted me your your book yesterday um, which of course I haven't had time to read just yet uh, it was a little bit fast to read a book in one night uh, with teaching and everything going on but I, I am going to look forward to doing that um, one of the things uh, that I really loved about you and which is one of the reasons why I asked you is because you have a, a beautiful essence with you that is grounded um because obviously we're going to talk about this but your shamanic um practice and your history but also you're very very connected to spirit and of course that's I live my life that way and so I love to interview people that are like-minded so Rachel thank you once again and could you just give us um an idea if someone didn't know you can you give us an idea of who you are and then Tell us something that was an incredible awakening for you that led you to do what you do now. Okay. Um, yeah, so who am I? Um, I <laughs> guess some people would uh, describe me as, as an empath. Um, I like to describe myself as someone that's quite grounded and normal. Uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> you are. That's why we got on so well, grounded. <laughs> grounded and normal. Yeah. From, um, from Essex. So, um, you know, oh, you can't yeah. get more grounded than <laughs> Um, yeah, I came from a, a very sort of religious family as well. Um, so very, very far from the, the whole idea of um, shamanism. Mm. Um, but I felt I had quite a good grounding. Um, I've always um, felt, um, you know, that I've got, I'm very close to the angelic realm. I believe in, in yeah. angels and, and, uh, and Jesus, um, who has played a big part in my life, actually. But I never kind of got to grips with the whole church religious mm. system, I suppose I, I like to call it. Um, I never felt particularly comfortable in the church setting. Mm. Um, so I was always searching, always searching um, yeah. for that, that one thing that resonated. And with you me. didn't find it in that. And I, I think it was similar to that, that I, not that I was looking or even knew I was looking, um, but definitely, I mean, I was confirmed into the church and it never you just did it because you went to Sunday school and you know and you just got on with it but it, it never felt like a resonance really to me but I just did it yeah exactly and actually my dad was the vicar of the church so didn't really have much choice <laughs> oh, yeah of course I, I remember you telling me that I'd forgotten that yeah so yeah. you so you were really it was really ingrained in you that that way of being and it's not a bad thing you know if you're listening to this and you've been brought up in, in a religious uh, situation. It's not a bad thing because there is a sense of identity with it, isn't there? And there's a sense of um, kindness as well, mm. not with everyone, of course, mm. but there is a kindness with, with religion as well, if you're looking at it from that perspective. Mm. I think mm. the intention is kindness. Yeah. Um, but I think with any religious setting, um, that you're gonna always find quite a lot of sort of um, conflict with that. And control. Um, yeah, and control. Mm. And um, I, it just didn't, there were, there were a few people that I met over the years that I, mm. I didn't feel comfortable with, I suppose. And yeah. uh, they had a lot of conflict in their lives. And um, yeah, I, I, I've just found that over the years, growing up as a teenager, I tended to sort of distance myself more and more from it. Mm. Um, so um, I guess the, the the, the main thing that really started me on this path, um, although I didn't know it then, mm -hmm. 
was uh, quite a traumatic experience actually that happened yeah. as a teenager. Um, it's like everyone's worst nightmare, I suppose. How old, Living, how old were you? Um, things really came to a head when I was 15. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and real pivotal age. Yeah, well, now I realise actually that's quite common for, for children mm -hmm. uh, of those, you know, that, that age for these mm -hmm. kind of things to happen. But I had, um, I was sort of under under attack, I suppose, by a demonic presence that um, reared its ugly head in our family home. Wow. Nobody really expected living with a vicar. You know? Yeah, yeah. Although, you know, I've heard this before and it's almost like there's like a, a focus Mm. yeah on that yeah go on I can't yeah. wait to hear this so I suppose I suppose being the, the youngest as well I, okay. I might have deemed as more vulnerable mm. um, however I I, le I learned after that actually before we moved into that home yeah I parents had to get my room specially decorated before I, I moved in because it was black and under the carpet there were a lot of satanic symbols oh wow. so they're they're obviously the 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 young girl there had been practicing uh, things that were quite nasty yeah and, uh, um but we were there you know a fair few years before anything happened so it, it was right. almost like it was just waiting biding its time until I was at that ripe age if you yeah like. and do you feel that that ripe age I mean, we've both got children you know and obviously one of mine's nearly 14 and they're very sensitive aren't they you know and um and I'm very connected of course but of course that's the opening of that connection was probably that doorway was it and the, yeah probably everything else the hormones and emotions yeah I mean because it yeah. never happened to my brother at that at that age mm. which was quite interesting but I mm. have always been incredibly sensitive yeah um, and I believe now that that was a, an, an element of sabotage um mm. to stop someone the likes of me and many other people who are empaths from going mm. on that light path and um yeah doing good and and being of service in the world yeah um, I think that was a direct sabotage when they yeah. just stopped me from from doing anything like I do now and actually it worked for yeah. many years because mm -hmm. the fear of it was so ingrained in me for so many years uh, so actually if you don't mind saying Rachel and is this in your book as well it is in the book yeah, yeah. you just hold your book up and just say what the title just so people know so, so the yeah, gift the gift of fear, and people can buy that um, on your website and on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you can go just give your website, website, and we'll give it later as well. What's yeah. your website? And it, um, it's sacredstones.org.uk. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it links straight to Amazon from there. Yeah. Or you Perfect. Can just go onto Amazon. Kindle. So the story is. So we're going to hear the story here, but if you want to hear the in-depth story and really listen to to Rachel's journey in depth, and 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 I would imagine receive lots of healing from it, then um, obviously go there after you've listened to this podcast and and yeah. purchase that. But yeah, so so I'm I'm kind of obviously my guides are talking to me the whole time, um, and one of the things that before you even said about um, a demonic experience, I was getting the satanic side. So that's what I was being told. So that must have been a really scary. And I don't want, you know, if you're listening to this, um, you know, don't switch off because, you know, you may think, oh my goodness, I don't want to hear about this. This is really awful. But actually, it is important to embrace the contrast of this world. Soul in a body, having a human experience. And it's really important to experience not experience, but to actually listen to the contrast, because mm. then you know that you are this light mm. and actually nothing can hurt you in this world. Once you remember who you are, would you agree with that, Rachel? Yes, yeah. absolutely. So, um, so you experienced that. So you were 15 years old around mm. about that time. Yeah. And what happened? Yeah, it was a slow build up. It, it started. Um, initially from um, just having that feeling that something was there really mm. heavy, negative scary in the room mm. and then being overcome um, with paralysis um, and that was the thing where I can it wasn't just the fear I knew that something mm. um, in the room was holding me down um, wow. stopping me from moving out of my bed and um all I knew to do at the time was to recite the Lord's Prayer yes. in my head. Yes. Uh, and eventually I'd be released from it and I'd 
run and jump into my mum and dad's bed, which, you know, as a 15 year old, <laughs> you know, wasn't what I would have hoped to have done, but I was terrified. And yeah. this sort of happened over time. How did they deal with that? Um, I, th- I think initially they were they were shocked and they hadn't experienced anything because it was all around me. My dad was saying prayers in the house to reassure me, but I think part of him was a bit sceptical. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, my mum was witnessing things as well. She was, she'd been pushed down the stairs at one point when she had a tray of hot drinks. Um, oh, yeah. I saw this horrendous thing stood over me one night. I saw, I, I saw in great detail um, okay. what this, this um, entity looked like. And it, mm. it was actually demonic. Um, I had a friend of mine stay who had been suffocated. In oh, the wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you yeah. knew that there was definitely, I mean, because that sort of thing. Something terrible. No. It doesn't doesn't happen every day of the week. And so you know that, you know, generally you come into this world and obviously this was all part of the plan, Rachel. You know, we, mm-hmm. you know, we can look at it and say, I bet if I looked at your astrological chart, I could look at where your Chiron was and I could see what was going on there. Maybe I'll do that one day with you. Yeah. It'd be really interesting. Yeah. Um, definitely. Astrology is such a beautiful science. And I believe we come in to experience these things and choose those parents to experience that. And we can see it all in the chart. But this has led you on your journey. And perhaps if something so dramatic and pivotal hadn't happened, mm. perhaps when it was time you wouldn't have stepped into that world but okay so go back to that so so basically this was it over time was it was it yeah it was between the age of 15 until Mm. I left home I went to university at 19 it was during those whole um years not every day sometimes Mm. not even every week I would say roughly once every fortnight um but because I'm so, I suppose, stubborn inside, mm. even though the fear had gripped me, I was determined to stick it out yeah. in that house. God knows how I found the strength to do that. Mm. Um, but I did. And um, and like you say, it was dramatic. And these sort of things are very rare. Um, yeah. But I think I, I experienced something so dramatic um, specifically to guide me off the path that I'm on now. Yeah. Because there were many times after where I've 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 seen and experienced just you know regular spirits, mm-hmm. <laughs> people that are trapped, um, yes. that are lost, lost souls. Yeah. But because I had this fear ingrained in me, mm. I experienced it always as something horrendous, really yeah. scary, really yeah. negative, really draining. So mm. I, I wanted nothing to do with it. So mm. again, I was always being pushed off of that path. Mm even though I'm very sensitive to these, these, mm-hmm. um, you know, poor lost souls around me. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, do you want to tell me where it, I got to the point of healing and. Yeah. Trans- so, so really, so essentially it would be really lovely to hear. So you went from that, you went to university. What did you, what did you study at university? The journey, you know, what's that journey, you know? Um, I actually studied um, commercial music. Um, oh, so, wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, there was what I loved I did a performing arts diploma before that and I yeah. thought that, that was my path and you know in a way it has been I've yeah. used music in my life you know yeah. performing and all sorts for many years mm-hmm. um, but in the end I think I, I kind of gave it a go in the music industry for a few years and you know yeah. all the knockbacks and all the rest of it and being so skin <laughs> I think <laughs> what else do I love and, and it's therapy um, therapeutic services working with people in a in a healing kind of fashion yeah. um, but not on a, I wasn't on a spiritual path at that point I, I studied mm-hmm. counseling and um, clinical hypnotherapy yeah well I'm with you because I wasn't on a spiritual path and I did psychology and psychotherapy and then the awakening happened you know at 27 yeah. in my case so yeah. it so you you know so we have these it's almost like the traditional background Mm-hmm. but then stepping out of the spiritual closet yeah. so when you <laughs> realized because <laughs> obviously you told me yesterday that you, you you used to be a dog groomer as well which was fascinating <laughs> um because our <laughs> puppy was very you know loved you didn't he um <laughs> coming to see you um and you used to be a dog groomer so you were kind of like really in touch with nature and grounded in the earth and the souls mm-hmm. that are here but you didn't really know where yeah. this shamanic or, or is it called shamanic or shamanic you tell me 
shamanic shamanic yeah so the shamanic journey um was going to take you Mm. so what was the stepping stone that led you to do the amazing work you do now (laughs) Um, I think because I had exhausted all options of, <laughs> of um, tr- trying to find something that would that would heal me and get rid of this fear that I was carrying with me constantly yeah. from yeah. house to house over mm-hmm. the years, always seeing and hearing things. And, you know, I, I was avoid I was very much um, avoiding all of that, um, pretending that it wasn't happening because I couldn't cope with the idea that actually these um beings or lost souls were trying to approach me and oh. more often than not they were asking for help yeah. but uh, I was so far removed from that concept mm. um, and in the end after having some really I look back and think oh how ridiculous it was actually in a home two homes ago I was so terrified of constantly seeing and hearing things that I I called my mum and said, "Look, mum, just send dad round. I can't cope with this anymore. Yeah. I was just terrified because I was allowing the fear to build up. Yes, yes. That's, and this is what, this is what on an energetic level, if there are any beings that are, are not serving, yeah. they love, they feed on the fear. Exactly. And that was one of my points I was going to say, you know, in the world at the moment, and we're, we're um, recording this on the 15th of July, 2021, and, you know, there, there seems to be a huge amount of wave of fear in the world. And we know, and unless you've been uh, in a coma for a year and a half, you'll know that there is a great awakening happening. You're listening to this. It's a great awakening happening. Or if you're listening to this a lot later on, maybe we're still in the awakening. Who knows? Uh, mm. But um, right now, you know, there's a huge amount of fear and um, lack of trust uh, in us, in, in ourselves and so on. So the collective is reflecting that fear. So yeah. do you feel like, you know, because you were holding that vibration of fear that you were then attracting, it's obvious, isn't it? But you were attracting all of those experiences, yeah? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I was attracting um, people that had passed. I think that had always been with me. But yeah. I was certainly attracting uh, occasionally neg- negative energies nothing yeah. like what I had as a teenager to be yeah. clear but negative energies that were draining and yeah. possibly feeding into my fear and yeah. you know emphasizing it a little bit more at times yeah. when you know I, I really didn't need that in my life um so I knew I needed to do something about it and yeah. I've spoken to lots of different people religious and and buddhists and Nothing seemed to really um, resonate with me um, personally. And it was only when I I spoke to another lady, I think she was a hairdresser, and Mm -hmm. she mentioned about this amazing shamanic practitioner and teacher in Fairlight. And I thought, actually, it just resonated immediately because I remember writing um, uh, a case study, I think it was, when I was doing my music degree Mm -hmm. on... um, the, the shamanic practice um, and how um, music or sound therapy yeah. um, can be really healing in the, uh, you know, the, the indigenous. Absolutely. Tradition. Yeah. It's, it's really deep. You know, it's really, really deep. It goes really in deep. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I, I just thought, okay, I need to contact this person. Um, maybe, you know, maybe she's my savior in a way. Maybe mm-hmm. she's going to finally break this cycle of fear. Yeah. Um, so I did, and I went and saw her. I wasn't sure what to expect. I've written it in the book, um, and I had the most amazing transformative experience. Um, she did what's called a, a soul retrieval on me. Um, before that soul retrieval, um, she was able to to journey and see that there was still a fine cording um, connected from from me to the experience wow yeah Mm -hmm. um and she was able to see um like a like a tracker so um you know on a shamanic level it's amazing how much we can see when we journey um and um um, she was able to break that that cord remove the tracker so I had no no longer had any connection to what happened back as a teenager Mm. Uh, it actually feel it lifting as, as she wow. was doing yeah. it. You know, it was yeah. really powerful. And then to have the soul retrieval. Um, I don't know if you want me to explain a little bit about soul retrievals and how 
Have yeah, they... just explain yeah briefly to people what that okay. means. Briefly, that um, when we have trauma in our life, part of our soul um, detaches, so it fragments off. Just a yeah. small each time a trauma happens, mm. and uh, and it, it leaves it leaves the the body and the spirit, um, and it's up to the shaman to. Um, Go on a journey and find that soul part. Um, it, it, that soul part, we can't ever determine which soul part might um, want to reconnect. But the, the intention is that a soul part that fragmented, as you know, because of the trauma, mm. would be ready and willing to reconnect to the person. So she was able to find that soul part that disconnected from me in that traumatic time of my life. And then reconnect it um, back, and it just—it felt like um, a child coming home. Mm. The mm. only way I could really describe it, um, and it was wonderful. And I felt uh, immediate, uh, immediately. I just felt completely different. Um, and on the drive home, I was elated. It was <laughs> a massive grin on my face, <laughs> and things just changed for yeah. me. They really, yeah. the fear was lifted. And now I'm in a position where I'm actually helping other people in similar mm. situations. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where the initial sabotage was. To yeah. Stop yeah. 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 In this in this way. But but also you were you were drawn to this. You knew what wasn't right for you and you were drawn to this particular lady. Actually, it's not far from us, is it? Fairlight um, mm. here in the south coast of, of the UK. If you're listening all over the world, this is the UK. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's literally probably 20 minutes drive from here but it's so essentially um you were guided you know to have that experience and that was your another kind of like spiritual awakening wasn't it yeah it was like an awakening moment and the mm. doors were flung open mm. and so the other thing that you do right because you do that um physically don't you can you do that remotely as well Yes, and, and actually I had some very powerful experiences of um, remote healing for people during the COVID lockdowns. Yeah, I, I personally had one very close friend and my brother, mm. who was extremely unwell, um, one in particular was critical. Um, and there were quite a few stories coming up with people that were, that, that were poorly and yeah. others obviously had nothing to do with COVID as well, people that... Um, you know we were in a coma and mm -hmm. extraordinary experiences so um yeah I was able to um come together with my group sometimes my peers and also yeah. sometimes on, on my own when it was right to mm -hmm. provide remote healing and mm -hmm. because it all happens on an energetic level exactly exactly and being yeah. in the room with me yeah yeah and they all and they all um pleased to say uh, are perfectly well today amazing and pe and so people there's I do want to talk about the other thing that you do as well but but so if you you're interested in this then please get in touch with um Rachel at her website so Rachel say it again uh, sacredstones.org.uk yeah excellent um and they can get in contact with you there and yeah she'll send you an email and stuff um so you came to me yesterday uh, to my physical home uh, which you also do remotely as well I know um, and you were checking for uh, ley lines and Ge geopathic stress sorry geopathic you were, you were checking for geopathic stress <laughs> let me get it right uh, and because um, ley lines are something different yeah so geopathic stress and it was a really fascinating experience so Rachel came with her rods and she checked all around. So I have a Victorian um, terraced home here in the UK. And so, of course, I have people next to me. Um, and so she was checking uh, for this geopathic stress. And it was really interesting because the energy in my home, I feel, is beautiful. And I work in my home and, you know, and it feels really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a line running, wasn't there? Can you explain what it was, Rachel? Yeah, I mean... The line running through your property will be running through probably every most single of person's property <laughs> on this terrace, which and yeah. there are many houses, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So geopathic stress is is basically potentially harmful energies emanating from the earth, um, mm -hmm. and it's caused by you know the earth's vibration um, that's disrupted. 
by um, things like pipes, underwater veins, they're called like pipes, sewers, um, yeah, yeah. wells, things like that. Mm. Um, and they can cause, um, you know, quite quite harmful, have harmful effects on, on humans and animals, actually. Mm. Um, so over long term periods, um, there's there's been many uh, accounts of people developing serious long term um, illnesses. Um, but initially it can start with stress, anxiety, headaches, lack of sleep. Mm. Um, so it's quite important that when a, a geopathic stress line is um, identified in someone's home, that um, if it's, for instance, going running right through someone's bed, particularly where their head is laying, um, the, the thing where we would always suggest is to move the bed out, mm -hmm. out of that line. If that's not possible, um, I know, for instance, in, in the room where I saw yesterday, yeah. Um, there are other things that you can do, like use there's a stone called shungite. Um, and that's the one that I'm going to get. So so I, I got your message yesterday. And so shungite, I'm going to get a really huge piece of shungite. That There's a corner, isn't there, outside of this room where it will be perfect. And it's sort of mm. interrupt. Is it interrupting the... Yes, mm. yes, it yeah. interrupts the flow. Also mm. copper as well, because you were talking mm. to me about the, the grounding sheet. I was, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, I, I think they can be effective, but it, mm. it very much depends on the strength of the line. And I, I, I can sense from your one and using the rods to clarify, it was quite a wide line. Quite a wide line, yeah. yeah. And it, the length of it, I'm sure, was, was quite long as well. So um, the shungite would certainly help. Sometimes people use copper rods as well. So that might be something also that you can add to mm. that area. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. just to help divert that that line around you know your son's bed but um yeah so there's all sorts of different things that the shamanic practitioner would would mm. um, work with to enable healing I and mean and you physically came here but you can actually do that you know you can do that remotely for people as well can't you can with you, the can you tune in? Stress, mm. I can I can tune in mm. and um, establish whether it it's there but with the geopathic stress um in particular, I think it's more effective to to go to the home with Rod mm. just to get mm. real clarity on where yeah. it might, might end. But certainly with healing yeah. and healing for people's homes as well, yeah. Um, yeah. that's very possible for remote, remote healing. Wow, so that's really helpful. So if you're listening to this and you're not in the UK and you're not where we live, you know, there's there's options where you can receive remote healing and, and Rachel will, you know, get back to you when you contact her um and also healing for your home so yeah. you know something that's coming to me and, and tell me if this is something that you would help with but what I'm being guided to talk to you about is if someone wants to move home mm -hmm. is there you know and maybe they haven't been able to sell their house and or maybe mm. they you know have problems with that would that be something you could help with yeah absolutely do you mean once they've actually moved into their home or, or if they or they that. can't sell their home yeah yeah mm. exactly so yeah there has been a few clients that, that have come mm. to see me who've had problems like that mm -hmm. um, and often you know there's um, imprints of energy that mm -hmm. remain in the walls and the floors and the ceilings oh, and the occupants you know if yeah. there's been some trauma in the house or challenging relationship and all that ingrained fear and and sadness and mm -hmm. all that energy just imprints into the walls mm. and so for the next person to to move in they're taking yeah. on that energy as well and it can affect them in so many different ways that people don't realize you know in their own relationships in their work um just Maybe. in their own being you know in their, their soul so it's it's really important i always say to everyone before you move um yeah. if you're having struggles selling things like that have some someone come in or do remotely some some home healing to help I definitely them. did that with my home I blessed every single room and thanked every single room and thanked the, gar the garden and everywhere and I thanked it for giving us a beautiful 11 years you know um you know I thanked it and it was quite it, I sold it within three weeks actually <laughs> Oh, but go. buying the next house was harder. <laughs> I wish I'd known yeah. you then. <laughs> yeah. Too fell free, but I always I always trust in the universe. So this I found this uh beautiful home. Um, you know, that happened to be empty, ready to be moved into. So there was no chain or anything. So I was very blessed. Um, but yeah, I had to do some healing work. You know, I felt 
to shift the the message of not being able to find somewhere so yeah. it's easy to sell no problem but it was actually the the actual finding somewhere that was that was perfect mm. and then mm. we found it by the sea which is perfect yeah lovely mm. and to, to move into somewhere and have have it you know proper home healing which can take hours to cover so yeah. many different things mm. then in an environment where everything is har- beautifully harmoniously balanced yeah you know, all, that's important all yeah centers of that home and working with the home guardian that protects the house you have the permissions and yeah. you know it's really then a, a perfect environment to to live and to, to bring yeah. up children if you have children mm-hmm. um, so yeah. I would always always recommend that one of the things that I do is um I put sort of almost like a I don't know it's a silver light around the house so if I've got workmen you know, mm-hmm. coming in and out in those days, <laughs> I always have workmen coming in and out. Then it's yeah. almost like they get like a car wash before they come in the home. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all, it's all, it's already um, kind of like protected. And that's, yeah. and that, that's just a, something that I've done, you know, for yeah. a long time. So I think all these practices is really important for us. Um, so if you're listening to this and you feel like either you need to receive some, some healing and that's really important, you know, just trust if you'll feel guided to this to, to receive some healing uh, from Rachel. Um, or you may feel that your home uh, needs some healing or, you know, mm-hmm. you need, need some help on that level. Because yeah. it's definitely, I mean, I, I love working with Rachel and I'm going to see Rachel again. And I think even as somebody you know I'm a I'm a channel and a healer and I help lots of people all over the world it's really important to give yourself that healing as well Mm -hmm. and with Rachel's work I can just kind of like I don't have to do anything which is really nice um, because I spend all my days helping other people which is my mission and I love it but it is really nice so if you're listening to this and you you know you're a you're a you're a practitioner and you feel um actually you don't you don't ever do anything for yourself then this would be a gift to yourself and I, I think yeah I think it would just be really lovely so Rachel have you got any um any last words that you want to say obviously we've got a book that people can buy and, and listen to your story um anything okay yeah my guides are saying what about the plants <laughs> okay <laughs> so so um what is it what is it about um the medicinal properties of plants there we go I'm doing a celery seven day um challenge at the moment so I was on my second day today and you know so maybe that's why they're talking to me about plants but you tell me what do you think yeah I, I guess uh, on from a shamanic perspective um honoring the plants is really important because mm. every plant even down to a, a little buttercup has a spirit mm. um, and so when we reach out and pick a flower or cut a tree down it's really important to be mindful of the the spirit or, I of that always plant. always do that and my children have been taught that yeah you know, if you you know when you water them you talk to them when you you know yeah. when you ever cut anything you always yeah. say thank you, you ask so permission much. and you yeah. give gratitude yeah so I would always give something back to to that that yeah. plant if it has to come down or be trimmed back yeah and it can just be herbs it can be a piece of your hair it can be some some um sage whatever because it's about the intention oh so you give something to the plant yeah so I have like a a little um (laughs) little bag (laughs) and in here I have some herbs whatever lavender or whatever I would give something back and that's my part of the shamanic ceremonies you give that back to to the earth um uh, as gratitude um So I work with sage all the time and lots of other um, different yeah. things that I, that I burn. And um, it's a really important part of my, my practice. Um, but I would say as a last message to anyone who uh, has resonated with, with um, this interview or chat or whatever, yeah. um, if, you, if you feel that, you know, there's something that's pulling you to... Um, you know, having a spiritual path or, or being of service in some way, but you have, you know, fears or, or anxieties around that, I would say just just go with that intention um, because there's always going to be something that will try and knock you off that path. Mm, I mean, mm. we all as, as human beings have 
our um, inbuilt gifts that we have. It's our birthright. We all Absolutely. have that. Yeah. But unfortunately, a lot of us are switched off from it because we yeah. live in a Western world and our focus is work, money. And, you know, so to give yourself the opportunity to um, open open up those, um, those mm. channels in some way, speak to somebody who's already working as an empath or, yeah. or you know, on a spiritual level, and just see what might open up because and ask for guidance as well so you know I might be listening to this and and say oh my goodness like I feel like there's something I just feel there's something more for me you know there's something more for me than than I'm doing or that I'm being and just ask them for guidance in that moment and just say will you show me you know universe show me god show me whatever you believe in just yeah. just show me where the next step is and I think that's you know, if we ask, then it is given, right? Absolutely. And we all have such, such spiritual support around us. And, I know. You know, I have my shamanic guides and, and my teachers, but I also work with the angelic realm. And, and yeah. like I say, Jesus has always been a big part of my life. So as a, a modern shaman, <laughs> yeah. I have quite a large um, spiritual team as backup. A and we all, shame. we all have that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all have that. So reach out, you know, as a humans with free will the support won't be there unless we ask for it I exactly think. yeah remember and we cho- we chose that didn't we we chose to you know I believe we chose to come in and to remember who we are and to remember that we were never meant to do it on our own yeah you know we 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 don't do it on our own but we were never meant to we're meant to know that we've got this guidance and support all the yeah. time yeah you know? it's there so take advantage of it <laughs> thanks Rachel oh my goodness so much and I you know the moon on a you know the moon is very important to me and yeah. um new moons I always get my children to you know really connect with that and think about what they want to bring in in the next cycle of the moon and mm. full moons what you want to let go of and you know uh, you know I do I don't know if you know I do my my moon astrology events which are donation based and I started them at the point of um the lockdown for people so that people could get some support and help and now I run them the new moon healing events and the full moon healing events Mm -hmm. astrological healing events every month um and me up (laughs) sign you up yeah and it is it is so beautiful because um we're really looking at the astrology of where so it might be a new moon in cancer or whatever it might be was just Mm now um and look at how that affects us, but also what we can heal to bring in for the next cycle. And I, I love that. And I think the, the shamanic um, aspect of, of the earth and the moon is all very connected, isn't mm. it? Mm. Absolutely. Mm. I'd yeah. love it if you did an astrological chart for me as well. well <laughs> that yeah. can be arranged, definitely. I'll do that for you. <laughs> as long as you know your um, time of birth. I do. Uh, then I can look yeah. at your rising sign and really look. And I love looking at it. I think I was an astrologer in another life because I look at it and then I'm hearing all of this stuff that's in the chart that I don't see in the chart. I hear it. So right. yeah, yeah, I'll definitely do that for you as a gift. That'd be amazing. Oh. <laughs> well, thanks, Rachel, so much. So um, thank you for being on the Spiritual Awake now. So if you've got an awakening story that you would like to share with me and my listeners, I love to hear it. So find me on susankennard.co.uk where you can also find a free video course which is called Awaken the Light Within. So if you want to awaken your light within, pop over to my website now, susankennard.co.uk. Much love for now.